Hey everybody, this is Melissa with Prison Wife Inside and Out, and I am so glad to be back with you guys. As Jonathan has told everybody on his channel, I did have surgery, I just had my gallbladder out. Not really a big deal, but the recovery's been a little rough, and now I'm just super itchy. So anyway, I am back, and I am ready to answer some questions, and I want to say that my first video got so much feedback that I was super excited. Um, you guys asked me some great questions and I definitely want to get to answering those so that way hopefully I can help somebody through their journey. So first shout out is going to be to Paisley Yama. Um, she asked me some great questions. She said, one, did your daughter accept her dad as an authority figure when he came home or would she only listen to you? Are you the primary disciplinarian? Was she shy around him or did she feel he was making a wedge between the two of you? Good question. Two, how was it adjusting to him after he came home? I mean, you and your daughter already had your routines and ways of doing things. Then he comes in 10 years later. Could he easily slip in as the role of dad and husband? Or would you honestly say you ruled a home and he had to follow your lead? These are some great questions. So there is a awesome story behind John coming home. So here we go with this journey. The good, the bad, the ugly. Here we go. So guys, just to get started, Jonathan came home in 2014 and first he went to a halfway house. So he had a few months where he was living about an hour and a half away from us um, in a halfway house and we were able to go and see him a few times while he was there. But before I even get into the details of his actual homecoming, when he actually came and lived with us, first I want to say that he was away for eight and a half years. So he got arrested just before our daughter's first birthday. This was his final arrest. I know he's got a long story of everything he went through over on prison life inside and out. So you understand that his arrest was something that happened in steps. But his final arrest was just before our daughter's first birthday. Uh, he was able to see her in the hospital when she was born. So he did have that with her. And there was one other little stop along the way. However, once he went away, we had to make a super hard decision on what we were going to do. Obviously, nobody ever wants their child to see the inside of a prison. I get that and I go with that. I completely understand and this was really hard decision for us. So my final decision on what I was going to do was that I was going to visit him. I was going to make sure that she had communication with her dad all along the way because I would rather her know him and him not physically be there than to her than for her to not know him because the one thing that I knew is that he would protect her with his own life he would never get out and cause trouble in her life or bring trouble to her and endanger her in any way so I really had to think that through uh, as to what was best for her well-being him and I as well had to make decisions because whether we were going to be together or not, we had to see each other as long as we had her. And that was very important to me. Her knowing her dad meant so much to me because mine was in and out. Jonathan's is pretty much non-existent. So um, we had to make some very tough decisions. So when we decided that she was going to see him, uh, we would have to drive four hours to see him. So we had to get up very early in the morning and we would drive four hours. We would see him and for six hours we would be in there and then we would have to drive four hours home. So this was not an easy thing to do, especially with a child. So I did it as often as I could, but sometimes it would be several times in a month that we would see him. Sometimes we wouldn't be able to see him for six months. It just depended on how the money was flowing and what our schedules were looking like. But we also had letters, we had emails, we had phone calls. She always knew who her dad was. She was always in touch with him. She always knew how much he loved her. And that had a big impact on him coming home. So, fast forward, he comes home. He leaves the halfway house. He gets released to my mother's address. 
So he immediately goes to my mother's house. He's got an ankle monitor on. He can't really go anywhere. He can't do anything. Like he can go to work and he can come back and that's about it. So we couldn't take her on a lot of outings or anything like that. So their first, their initial times together were spent in my mom's house or out in her yard. About a week after he got released to her address, Sarah and I went and moved in with my mom. So we were there with him. Sarah was stuck to him like glue. She wouldn't let him out of her sight. Everything she did, she wanted dad there too. They played volleyball in the yard. They chased each other. They made videos on his phone. They did all kinds of things together all the time. If he fell asleep on the couch, she fell asleep on him. She was completely attached to him. And at this point, she is eight and a half. She is coming into her own. She's starting to learn personalities and she's developing <laughs> quite the personality herself. So she was daddy's girl, 100%, didn't want to do anything. Because of their time apart, I didn't mind playing bad cop. I He only reprimanded her if he absolutely had to. Like if she was just going too strong and he had to say, stop, slow down, it's okay. Uh, outside of that, I... I was the only one that had to reprimand her, but she didn't get in trouble a lot. She was a very good girl. So that wasn't, discipline wasn't really a big issue when he came home just because of that. She was, she's a good girl. She still is. So we haven't had a lot of trouble with that. Now the little one, that's a whole different story. A lot of people over on prison life inside and out have had the pleasure of meeting our little one already. And she's a wild, wild one. But getting back to Sarah and John's homecoming, um, she... Him and I were not together when he came home. We were still friends. We were talking all the time. We were in communication. We knew everything about each other's lives and what was going on. So we were super close anyway, but we were not together. We rekindled about two weeks after he got home. This definitely upset Sarah. And when I say this upset Sarah, she had like a meltdown about it. She ran to my mom crying. She just knew that, you know, I was taking her dad from her. And obviously she came to realize that that's not what was happening. Uh, mom and dad were back together and that was a good thing for her. She just didn't really understand it at the time. All she knew is not 100% of dad's attention was on her. So when he came home, we talked about everything before he came home and we continued to talk after he came home because not only is he dealing with things as he's coming into the world but we were dealing with things as he was entering our world so that's a whole nother video as to what was going on in the backgrounds but it was definitely a whole lot happening so he was trying to catch his footing he still didn't really like to be touched, hugged, anything, and I'm putting that lightly. Like, he did not like it. He would stiffen up like, ugh. You could tell he was extremely uncomfortable to be touched or hugged by anybody but Sarah. So they were each other's comfort. Uh, she was dealing with a lot as a kid already. You know, her dad's been gone. She, Her friends can't relate to that. They don't understand that. So she was already learning the differences between her life and her family and the rest of the kids her age. Everything was different, but that was okay. And she knew that. She knew it was okay. She was comfortable in her own world. So when it came to dad and I rekindling and some of his attention coming off of her, he started to have to reprimand her a little bit more. But in a lot of ways, yes, he did follow my lead just because he completely respected the fact that we had a whole life before she came home or before he came home. We had a completely different routine. Everything was different before he came home and he respected that. He understood it. So he was building a life from the ground zero. He had nothing to build on. The life that he had prior to getting into all this trouble was down in Georgia and it wasn't much of a life at all. So he was literally starting completely over and ultimately we were too because we moved into my mom's. Our schedules changed when we moved and 
we had to approach things differently. You know, it, it became a situation where once dad's ankle monitor came off, I say dad, like John, <laughs> once his ankle monitor came off, he had to use the car. So he would take me to work. He would take her to school and then he would go to work himself. And there was just a whole rotation. Everything changed. But honestly, Sarah was okay with everything changing as long as she had him. I think her only insecurity was him not being there anymore. I think she felt like her time with him was limited because that's all she had ever known. So once she got comfortable with the fact that it wasn't limited anymore, she actually had dad. She had him around the clock. He wasn't going anywhere. And she started to kind of calm down a little bit. She was willing to go and see her friends. She was willing to have friends over and go play with them. Like the attachment started to slowly separate just a little bit so that she still had time with mom and dad. She, her and I still tried to have our little time all through Sarah's life. Her and I have always had girl dates. So that was a, that was a whole nother thing that kind of got put on pause, but we still had our time together. So to answer your question, yes, he did fall into our routine in a way, but our routine was completely new as well. So we incorporated all those things together. If I was just giving advice on somebody who has someone coming home and you have children, if the children have not been visiting and been in contact and have not had an open communication about the fact that, hey, dad is coming home and this is how this is going to go. If that has not happened, then I definitely recommend talking through every step of the way that you can. Because the ultimate thing is that this is something huge in their lives. Somebody is coming in. And whether it's dad or whether it's anybody new, you have to be willing to hear them because there's going to be things that are going to go along, that are going to come along the way that they aren't going to know, they're going to get upset about, and they're not really going to know how to put that into words. So you got to be willing to listen and listen patiently, but also make sure you set your boundaries. The one thing that we never accepted from Sarah, no matter what was going on, was disrespect. She was, she could be upset. She could go to her room. She could growl. She could scream if she wanted to in her space, but she could not yell at us. She could not talk back to us. She would have to come to us and say, Hey, this is how I feel. If she couldn't start the sentence that way, if it just came out disrespectful, we made her stop, calm down, come back, try again. Because you've got to be willing to listen and hear them out. They're going through it too. You're not, it's not just you. And it's not just your husband, your spouse, your other half coming home. All of you are in it together. So you got to be willing to hear the changes. Explain as much as you can. With Sarah, we stayed super open with her. And when I say super open, I mean we knew that she was going to have ups and downs along the way. But she was also kind of coming into girlhood. So there was some emotions in there too that she didn't really know how to handle. So we had to give her the stability, number one, the structure that she felt confident in coming to us. If we were fumbling things around and we were as unsure as she was, I don't think it would, it would have gone as smooth because even though John and I were, you know, we were, we were working through some things also, obviously we were just rekindling. So, but we had to stand strong when we would come to her, we would have an issue with her. We always stood together. We were in the room together. If she wanted to talk to just mom, that was fine. We could do that. If she wanted to talk to just dad, that was fine. We could do that. But as long as she knows that, as long as all the children involved know, I can't talk just about Sarah anymore because I'm, I'm kind of giving some advice here, but as long as the children know that the parents, regardless of relationship status are on the same page no tricks can be pulled. No sides can be played. That is the most important thing. If, if you're going to be together, stand strong together. If you're going to be apart, still stand strong together when it comes to the kids. You've got to be able to talk. You've got to be able to hear that you're wrong sometimes. And you've got to be able to accept that just because somebody did something different than you doesn't mean that it's wrong. That was really hard for us. Not for him, but for me. 
Um, I had been raising her all that time without him. So anything that I was doing that he did different initially, I wanted to correct him all the time. And then I realized through him telling me, I realized what I was doing and I had to back off because I can't, I can't do things my way all the time. How are they going to have a relationship if they don't interact in their own way without me telling them how? That wasn't fair. But when it comes to standing your ground, setting those rules, setting those boundaries, you guys have got to talk and communicate. It can be really scary. Uh, it can be very unnerving, unsettling. And to ice the cake during this whole homecoming, I was pregnant. I got pregnant just a few weeks after he got out, after he came to my mom's house. So it everything happened super fast. It seemed like at the time, at the time, it seemed like everything was super slow, but it actually happened all really fast. And the fact that we were able to hold it together is just another miracle in itself. But that's kind of how John and I are thick or thin, good or bad. We are always going to hold ourselves together for each other. So that's the story of John's homecoming. I hope I've answered all your questions and I'm definitely looking forward to doing more videos with you guys. So welcome back. And I'll see everybody again soon.